Welcome to Uncaged, a show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Michael Bloxton. Hey, Michael, how are you? I am good, man. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you on the show. We're going to be talking about some big topics today, most notably focused around space. Michael is the chairman and CEO of Nebula Compute, which is a company that's doing quite quite a, a few really, really interesting things, but really helping build infrastructure that humanity needs to leverage space and really to take advantage of the near near term opportunities, as well as the mid and longer term opportunities. And so we'll go into more detail about Nebula in a second here. Uh, let me just start out with, with asking you, Michael, uh, kind of an opening question. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. I am a, a Philly, born and raised. Uh, I now live out in uh, Southern California and was never aware that I could be in space at all. At any <laughs> point in my life that I think that I was going to be a guy that was running space companies. Um, so probably a lot like everybody listening. Uh, and, and I got to tell you, now that I'm in it, we need more of it. We need a lot more people that no matter what your background um, or creed is, you need to if you have an inkling, you have an interest, you should explore it. Well, I mean, listen, you, you're clearly building a business ar around delivering solutions for space. Tell us a little bit more about what Nebula does and what's your vision for the business. Got it. So so Nebula Space Enterprise is, is kind of the top here. And then we have four companies underneath, Compute, Blockchain, Cyber, and Media. And it all started because I thought of what I wanted to spend my life doing. I got to a point personally, where I, where I could take my foot off the accelerator and think about what am I going to spend the rest of my life doing? And space was something for the first time ever. Again, no background, no engineering, no aerospace. I don't even know anybody. I didn't even know anybody at the time that worked in the industry. Yet, when I sat down and thought about it, space was the thing that, that kind of rang out in my soul. And I thought about what would I dedicate my life to? And, and that's really what enterprise is dedicated to, which is providing all of humanity access to deep space and infinite resources. Because we believe if we can do that, we can remove 95% of the reason we have conflict, conflict here on earth. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Well, that comes, that's where you look at compute, blockchain, cyber, and media. Compute is bringing data centers to space. So, we're, so a nebula is where stars are born. Um, mm -hmm. And the compute side of things is, is a cloud, a nebula is a cloud in space. And, and if you look at computing and you look at humans, we're really good when we have great com computational capability, whether it's through AI or even machine learning or, or just object detection, things like that. Really good can, can accelerate blockchain and cyber kind of go hand in hand with being able to then have data that you can trust and cyber to know that you can protect it. Uh, mm -hmm. Media, uh, really what media is meant to do is to help everyone find their place in space. The vision, as you heard, is massive um, for mm -hmm. Nebula. And, and the spark was when my son was born, he was a month old. I was thinking about how do I get him the future he deserves? And that's what enterprise is. And that's what all these companies are doing is building out that, that infrastructure that we need. So humans, and if my son, when he grows up, wants to do a stint on the moon or go out to Mars, he can do that because we mm -hmm. built uh, the capability. And for every, everyone listening that was just like me, had no idea where they could fit. If you're a fashion designer, plumber, electrician, anything, and you want to know where, where you fit, where your place is in space, that's what media's objective is, is to help you find that. That's great. Uh, and I can see that there's such a critical need for all four of those areas as we, as we really shape or reshape uh, our focus around what you can do with space. There's a lot of noise, obviously, in the industry about things going on with space. Uh, Mr. Musk uh, always has a, a comment here or there, but tell us a little bit more about what's happening globally in the space industry. I think there's a, an awareness that uh, you, you now have access to space. And if you think back in history, only governments, right? Only governments could touch, touch the stars. And then only billionaires, you know, Musk and Bezos and Branson are, are really good examples. Only billionaires could, could touch the stars. But recently, uh, there was a, a company out of Israel that had a spacecraft called Besheret. 
And they only raised $100 million and they were able to land on the moon. Now, in that particular one, they crash landed, but they're already building another one. So if you go from governments to billionaires to now $100 million, I mean, you're seeing an exponential drop in access to space. And once you have access, you can make a correlation in history to you know, accessing the new world through ships, or once you're in the new world, accessing the West Coast through train lines. So we're at this point where the I think humanity as a whole is waking up to the access, the the opportunity for entrepreneurs and even engineers and, and scientists is how do you leverage that? And most people take for granted the fact that we're having this communication and there is data centers involved, there's cell towers involved, there's fiber optic cables involved. And depending on where you're watching this, there are satellites involved. And if you have a phone, there's a satellite involved. I mean, GPS yeah. is run off the backbone of satellites. Uh, so space is touching your everyday life as intimately as you could possibly imagine, but most people don't know it, but they're waking up to it. So there's this awareness that's happening, I think, globally. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. We see uh, conversations around space tourism and certainly all the various companies that are trying to either push to just get into orbit or plan trips to the moon or to Mars. And it's very exciting to see that. But, you know, one of the things that I loved about Nebula is this idea that you have an, a mission to find your place in space and really kind of see this, this idea of space as something that's for everyone. Tell us a little bit more about that. So, so you touched on tourism. Tourism isn't for everyone. I mean, when you look at it, you know, statistically or statically, tourism seems like a really big industry, but it's only reserved for the people that have excess income, right? It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not a for everybody thing. And quite frankly, I think it's a terrible business model, especially when it comes to space. Yeah. And then the flip side of that is find your place in space. So for, for me, intimately, personally providing my sons now, now I have a, a second son, um, providing them the future they deserve. And I equate his generation with generations around the world. Right now, we only have about three and a half or four billion people on the internet. We have seven and a half billion people. So almost half the world doesn't even get onto the internet, which is a major accelerant to human capability. Uh, space, uh, to, to tie space directly to the internet, because I think everyone gets the power of the internet. Mm -hmm. If you look at, so my background is in telecom finance. So if you look at Mob Bell, hundreds, a hundred and some odd years ago, built 5 million telephone poles around the United States just to connect the United States, 5 million telephone poles. And then if you look at the cell tower industry of which I was direct part of, there's 500,000 cell towers in the United States. So an order of magnitude, less infrastructure to connect it at multiple orders of magnitude faster. And now if you look in the space industry, look at companies like Starlink or OneWeb, um, or, or uh, several others, they're, they're looking at constellations that have 50,000 satellites. The aerospace community is like, oh my God, we've never put up that many. This is insane. But compare that to what I just, the two examples I just gave, 5 million telephone poles, 500,000 cell towers, 50,000 satellites. Mm -hmm. But the difference here, the, the significant difference, not just the order of magnitude drop in infrastructure, it's that they're not serving just the United States. That's the entire globe. So why space? Just from that angle alone, you're not going to be digging fiber optic cable and building cell towers across the sub-Saharan Africa, uh, sub-Sahara, or even in the Amazon. You need to do it in a different way. And that's where mm. space can really be leveraged for humanity. I love that. I, I, I really think there's a lot of people that aren't even thinking about it these days. And you know, before before we started the interview today, Michael, I mentioned that uh, when I was growing up, I felt that that we, we all talked about space. Um, I I don't think I ever went to an elementary school class where there wasn't a picture of an astronaut hanging on the wall, <laughs> and so it was very much part of our consciousness. I'd say in the late '70s, early '80s, and you know, when I was growing up, but it certainly has changed, and and that means that we have a ton of people that are. I'd say almost new to space. And, and I'd be curious as to what advice you have for those folks and what resources are out there for folks to learn more about space. There, right now, if you, we've all watched .com, whether, whether you're 10 years old or 20 years old or 50 years old, you saw and are aware of the ramifications of a kid in a garage up against a corporation. We are at that same exact place, or actually I would say, just getting into that place for space. 
mm-hmm. where access to space is is super um, effective, cost effective compared to where it was, dropping by orders of magnitude. But a small group of people can absolutely make a huge impact. Again, take take uh, the the company in Israel, one hundred million dollars, which sounds like it, it would, is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But compared to the billions of dollars, and, yeah. and literally you were getting the space by measures of GDP, gross domestic product for the entire country. I mean, just armies of people had to do it. And now a small group of people in Israel are landing on the moon. So to be encouraged in space, there is a place for you to be able to do something as long as you have access to the internet, again, which is why I'm passionate about that. As long as you have access to the internet, you can connect with other like-minded people and create something, provide a solution that benefits not just you personally, but everyone uh, that can have access to it. Yeah, I, I think the thing I love about what you're saying is that you have your vision is less about space in on its own, and more of this kind of seamless connectivity with with our life here, which is which is definitely a unique vision. And it's quite a quite an interesting one. I think it's, it's in some ways easier for people to to grasp, right? If you can connect to their lives as they exist today. And so it clearly you're, you're shaping the direction of people that are exploring space as a topic. I mean, what does the near future look like for the Nebula team? So we're busy executing. I mean, what we're talking about now, again, compute blockchain, cyber and media are, are fundamental. Uh, if you look at what at and Ma, Ma Bell did for infrastructure, building out those 5 million telephone poles, building out 500,000 cell towers. But then you look at, and again, this is a message directly to the audience. Look at Facebook, look at Google. They don't have any infrastructure or they didn't have any infrastructure and their trillion dollar companies built off the back of that infrastructure. So compute, unfortunately, has to get done. That's a hard play. It's a yeah. hardware play. But you know, you want your security of data, which is where blockchain and cyber come in. You want to be able to have uh, know that that data, that your data is is what it is, and then you want to be able to protect it. So we're building just infrastructure right now. The future is open for business. I mean, we, there's so much opportunity once we have this infrastructure built to be able to get out there. And and media, again, is for you to find your place in space. So we just launched a a weekly newsletter that's that's actually my favorite newsletter that I get. I've, I've curated it uh, over many years, and, and now we're, we're able to, to take what I look for personally that gets me inspired about space to share with others. So uh, the Nebula Space Insider, uh, which you can find on Nebula Space, uh, nebulamedia.space, uh, you can find our newsletter there and sign up, but comes out weekly. Definitely one of the funnest newsletters I get. I love seeing it has all the, the cutting edge to get you inspired, to have you understand. Man, I think we even talked about before with your, with, with your background, the awareness, like when mm-hmm. people get this newsletter, they're going to be like, that's happening? Yeah, wow, that's I, happening? I, I strongly happening? feel it. You know, uh, we, we, I had an employee a couple of years ago, and we used to discuss that a lot about how, um, you know, the world would stop uh, when the, the shuttle would launch and mm-hmm. everyone would just stare at screens. And I think it just was, it was because it was so removed from our lives. It was, it was kind of almost like, Every time it happened, it was a historic event. Mm-hmm. And the exciting thing is now things have accelerated in pace so dramatically. I mean, so much stuff is happening that that a source like Space Insider is just incredibly valuable to give people that sense of all those elements coming together and shaping this new era that we're, we're moving into. And certainly it's an exciting one. Michael, there's there's a lot going on at, at Nebula. If someone wanted to learn more, where's the best place to reach you? I would absolutely say go to uh, nebulamedia.space. Uh, we're going to start consolidating. It's one of the reasons, too, we have so much going on in, in compute, in blockchain, in cyber, um, as well as other projects where if you go to nebulamedia.space, you'll be able to get in touch with you know podcasts that we're doing, um, articles that we're writing, news from all the different companies, uh, opportunities to, to get engaged, to get involved. Uh, so absolutely, nebulamedia.space is the way to go. Excellent. Well, we've been speaking with Michael Bloxton. He is the chairman and CEO of Nebula Compute. Nebula Compute is really, I'd say, opening up a gateway for space. For a lot of us, it's a world-changing space technology company with a significant near-term revenue model. It's working on building that infrastructure. 
And I, I guess the thing that really stood out to me, Michael, is this vision that you have that tethers kind of our, our lives today with this vision, the seamless vision of all of us having a place in space. It's a mm -hmm. lovely idea, play, a place in space for all of us. So, Absolutely. Michael, thank you so much for being on Uncaged Day, and we look forward to having you back. Pleasure, Ben. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers.